Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on memory management in big data at IntelliPart. Do you know friends that high performance computing clusters are facing additional challenges as a result of the everyday generation of enormous amounts of heterogeneous data from several sources such as Instagram, Netflix, e-commerce applications and many more which includes storage and analysis issues. Now before we discuss our today's agenda, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So first, we will discuss about what is memory management. Moving ahead, we will learn about areas of memory management. Then, we will discuss the importance of memory management. Moving ahead, we will learn about Apache Spark. Then, we will discuss about the memory management layer. And at the end, we are going to conclude our session with discussing the optimization. So let's start with what is memory management. Memory management refers to the process of controlling and coordinating the main memory of a computer. It helps to ensure that memory space blocks are managed efficiently and allocated such that the operating system, applications and the other running processes have the memory they require to perform their operations. Now, let's discuss the areas of memory management. Memory management is basically divided into three levels, hardware, operating system and program application. Each level's management capabilities team up to maximize the memory availability and efficiency. And that there are basically three levels. First one is the hardware level, second one is the operating system level and the third one is the application level. Now, Let's discuss each one of them one by one. So the first one is the hardware level. At the hardware level, memory management is concerned with the physical components that store data, most particularly the random access memory chips and CPU memory caches. The memory management unit or the MMU which controls the processor's memory and caching operations handles the majority of physical management. One of the key aspects of MMU is to translate the logical addresses used by running processes to the physical addresses on the memory devices. The MMU is usually integrated into the processor, but it can also be used as a separate integrated circuit. Now, let's discuss at the operating system level. Memory management at the operating system level entails allocating specific memory blocks to the individual processes at CPU resource demands the change. To accommodate the allocation processes, the operating system moves processes between memory and storage devices, that is hard disks or SSD, on a continuous basis while tracking each memory location and its allocation status. The operating system also decides which processes get memory resources and when those resources are allocated. An operating system may use swapping as a part of this operation to accommodate more processes. Swapping is a memory management technique in which the operating system temporarily moves a process from main memory to the secondary storage so that the memory can be used by the other processes. At the appropriate time, the operating system will swap the original process back into the memory. The operating system is also in charge of handling processes when the computer's physical memory space runs out. When this happens, the operating system switches to a virtual memory, a type of a pseudo memory allocated from storage drive configured to emulate the computer's main memory. If the demand for memory exceeds the capacity of physical memory, then the operating system can automatically allocate virtual memory to a process as it would do to a physical memory. However, because secondary storage is much slower than computer's main memory, the use of virtual memory can have an impact on an application performance. Now, let's discuss at the application level. At this level, memory management is implemented during the application development process and controlled by the application itself rather than being managed centrally by operating system or memory management unit. This type of memory management ensures that enough memory is available 
for the program's object and data structures. This is accomplished by combining two related tasks. The first one comes the allocation. When the program requests memory for an object or a data structure, the memory is reserved for that component until it is explicitly released. If the allocation is manual, the developer must explicitly program it into the code. And if the process is automatic, a memory manager handles the allocation, assigning the necessary memory to the object using a component called allocator. The memory manager could be built into the programming language itself or be available as a separate language module. When a program no longer requires the memory space assigned to an object or data structure, that memory is released for reassignment. This task can be performed manually by the programmer or automatically by the memory manager, which is commonly referred to as garbage collection. I hope so, you would have got idea regarding the areas of memory management. Now let's move to the next part that is importance of memory management. Efficient memory usage is a key to a good performance. Spark is a memory management based data processing framework. Hence, memory plays a central role. Spark memory is a memory pool managed by the Apache Spark. The Spark memory is responsible for storing intermediate state while doing the task execution like joins or storing the broadcast variables. All the cached or persisted data will be stored in this segment, specifically in the storage memory of this segment. It automatically caches the material that is utilized the most frequently. Each node in the system also has allocated a local storage space. It has a cluster for processing hot and epipheral data. Any sort of storage could be used here, that is memory, SSD or HDD. The user chooses the amount and the kind of storage. Data that is only available in the shared storage is replicated in the local storage when the application tries to read it. One of the eviction policies can be used to choose which data should be removed when the local storage is full. I hope so you would have got idea regarding the importance of memory management by taking an example of Spark. Now let's study about Spark. So for parallel data processing on computer clusters, Apache Spark is a computing engine and collection of libraries. One of the most popular open source engines for handling big data is Apache Spark. Several well-known programming languages are compatible with the Apache Spark, such as Python, R, Scala, and Java. It provides libraries for many different processes, including such as data loading, SQL queries, machine learning, and streaming computation. A resilient distributed dataset is Apache Spark's fundamental notion. It functions as a collection of partitioned immutable items. These components may also be operated. The Apache Spark standalone cluster manager or the other cluster managers like Mesos or Yarn can manage the Apache Spark cluster. Apache Spark performance is evaluated using the Apache Spark standalone cluster management. Basically, the application is first received by the Apache Spark master after which a driver process is started and it is linked with the cluster management via the Spark context. The Apache Spark workers are distributed by the cluster management. An executor process is present in every worker. The driver process is in charge of managing the Apache Spark's application progress, running the main function, responding to user input and analyzing or allocating and also scheduling work among the executors. The executors are responsible for executing the task assigned to them and communicating the computation status to the driver's node. Apache Spark may also be utilized with Hadoop clusters since it was designed to read and write data and to form Hadoop distributed file system. Users can easily access application data and it is thanks to the HDFS distributed file system which also enables the management of vast amount of structured and unstructured data. A file system called HDFS distributes the processing of large datasets 
across cheap hardware clusters. So if we talk about the memory management layer, basically the difficulties in the basic data architecture makes it necessary to use a separate memory management layer in between data processing layer and the data storage layer. It includes global namespace, cache management and data locality. It automatically caches the most commonly used data. Each node of the processing cluster has a local storage area set aside for hot and transient data. It is possible to store anything, the memory, SSD or SDD. The user chooses the amount and the kind of storage. Data that is only available in the shared storage is replicated in local storage. When the application tries to read it, one of the eviction policies can be used to choose which data should be removed when the local storage is full. It also manages the distributed system as the data are duplicated in the local storage. A distributed file system's key component that is a global namespace makes it simple to locate and retrieve data from various storage systems with only one management and administrative layer. It serves as a global namespace. The global namespace can be thought of as a global file directory that makes it appear as though all form of data and various storage systems is kept in a single storage system. It automatically transforms any storage interface from the common client-side interface. Now we will discuss the optimization. Developers can cache the data that will most likely to be reused in various big data platforms that support in-memory processing such as Apache Spark and Apache Flink. As a result, the choice of which data to cache in the memory is entirely up to the developer. When working with jobs that include activities with complicated dependencies, it might be challenging to decide whether data should be cached or not. Caching all data in a memory will cause large performance hit when the memory is limited. This caching reduces in-memory computation efficiency while saving the RAM. Another issue with data processing is data localization. Data are physically dispersed among several cloud regions and racks to be processed basically. Data must be close to where data computation takes place. The application developer must be also familiar with the storage APIs including SDFS API, Fuse API, S3 API and the REST API as the data required by the application may be stored in the various storage system. For big data frameworks basically to improve the memory management, many optimization techniques have been proposed. When the RAM used to cache data for the Apache Spark hits a capacity limit, must be chosen to be purged in order to make room for the new ones. Different cache replacement techniques were investigated to enhance Apache Spark performance, such as the least recently used technique, which is used by the Apache Spark's cache replacement strategy to decide which RDD should be replaced. Many of the researchers have found that Apache Spark outperforms the Apache Ignite because Apache Ignite struggles to distribute data among the available nodes. Apache Ignite is a high performance distributed in-memory computing platform for large scale data sets that has a cache management feature and also it keeps data in RAM as much as possible having minimum interaction with a disk. That was all for today's session. I hope so you would have got idea regarding the memory management in the big data. Just a quick info guys, if you want to make a career in big data, then IntelliPad provides an advanced certification in big data analytics by ENICT Council IIT Guwahati. It is taught by IIT professors and industry experts. With more than 10 years of experience, this course is designed to upskill and land your dream job.